Ladies, gentlemen, they, thems, good evening and welcome. It's the Private Property Podcast. I'm your host, Sibs Matiel, and we're here to talk about all things property because of privateproperty.co.za. We love to connect you to the heart of property. All of your burning questions that you want answers to, I do not have the answers, but what I do is bring in the experts and they answer those questions for us. Today is no different. We are speaking to Carl Vandenberg from Private Property. He is the Business Development Executive. Carl, how are you? Hey, Sibs, how are you doing? Good, thank you. What brings you to our neck of the woods today? Uh, well, firstly, we've got uh, a, a private property event happening, which is called the Real Estate Industry Summit. Okay. Here in Santon, uh, it really is a focused event where we bring all of our clients, all of our partners from the entire ecosystem. So really, when you're talking about estate agents, banks, insurers, telcos, everybody that has some form of involvement in somebody's property journey. We've got a wonderful conference going on at the moment um, with some amazing international as well as local speakers. So super exciting. 1,500 people in one room. The energy is just amazing. Wow. And it's all about property. It is all about property. Tell me something. The last time we had you in studio, obviously it was during the property show that was happening in September. Mm. Um, and you were telling us all about the private property portal and how people can utilize that. Have you seen a lot of growth on the portal just in this last half of the year? Oh yeah, the, the growth has been uh, absolutely immense for private property. There are always you know, things around the economy and you know, clients, uh, or excuse me, um, economic conditions mm. that sort of changes people's behavior. We've seen a bit of an interest rate cycle, which we're currently in, which is not just a, a, a local issue in South Africa, but it's a global issue at the moment mm. with what we've seen uh, rising inflation. So yeah, the growth is there, the demand is there, even though we've seen um, a bit of a slowdown in it, People are still buying homes. People still want a roof over their head. We're still seeing people that are buying their first properties. And I'm talking about the first person in their generation mm. or in their entire family to buy a property. So that, as private property, it's, just, it's, a, it's an immensely privileged place that we're in that we get to see these things. I love that. Tell me more about the portal and how people can best utilize it. I mean, we all go on private property. I learned... <laughs> hate to admit this out loud on um you know camera but i always thought of private property like i go there and then i pick a property and then i buy it but you guys don't sell houses it's a portal where you can do so many things that lead you and enable you you know to have a, a, a very sort of seamless experience when it comes to your home buying experience well you know buying property is not just about the actual transaction of buying a property seeing a house and buying it there's a lot of information that one needs to understand around these things. So, you know, it's one around personal preference, right? So where do I want to live? Um, do I want to live close to a school? You know, do I have children? Am I planning on having children? Am I going to have family living with us? It's those sort of things that private property can then assist you with mm. in terms of being able to find the right property. But it goes a lot deeper than that. It's around the education. It's around the content. It's around how it is that we bring all of our partners together with all of their wealth of knowledge and experience and disseminate that information to the con people out there that are wanting to buy property. So it's a lot more than just a, a portal. We don't sell houses. <laughs> <laughs> um, a, as many people do think, I still go to a bra and people go, oh, so you're an estate agent. Yeah. You're not an estate agent. We're a, we're a platform, but it's private property and we're quite uniquely positioned to be a lot more than that. So as you know well, very prominent on, on podcasts and social media, sort of one and a half million people that follow us daily podcasts, and that's where they're gathering their information, they're gathering mm. their, their knowledge around what are the pitfalls of property, how do I go about these things, and uh, you know, it's just everything. And again, bringing our partners in there around pre-approvals and the rest of those things. So like you said, um, the education aspect is so huge for private property because private property connects you to the heart of property. Um, and you, you have multiple events and sort of things that you do as the year progresses where you'll help people and bring them on board like the event that you're hosting right now that's maybe more for stakeholders mm. um, and practitioners whereas mm. you know there are other events can you tell me more about those and specifically going into 2023 what exactly your plans are 
Yeah, so one of the things, and like we did in September here in Sampson, was around the property show. Mm. And again, that is more geared to the consumer coming in and wanting to interact with the people that they interact with digitally on our portal. They can now do it in real life, which is obviously amazing that we can get to do events again yeah. um, after COVID. So the next event that we've got is in Cape Town on 1 April. And very much the same, we had 10,000 people coming through uh, in Sampson in September. We expect the same, if not more. And again, making sure everybody in the ecosystem is there, present and able to engage in a human manner. And that's one thing, you know, we're a digital business and we're proudly digital, but you're never going to get away from that human element, that mm. humanizing of this experience. And that's what these property uh, shows are all about, is just bringing the humans together. This is a, it's a massive decision people make. And, and the, the platform of having it in a physical world is exactly what we're going to do. We'll be doing many more of those um, throughout the year. We haven't quite got the dates and, and venues yet, but really we have a vision of being able to take this to whether it's Kuruman or whether it's Cape Town, but let's be everywhere. We've got millions of people in South Africa that are very keen around understanding property and getting into property, whether they're investors or wanting to, to um, rent a property. So we need to be there both digitally as well as physically. I hear what you're saying and i'm so glad you brought up um cape town traditionally it's one of the places where you know you think you've been priced out of the market especially mm. as a home a first time home buyer a lot of people in that area sort of maybe wait till later or until they've gathered the millions of monies that they need to be able to afford something on the atlantic seaboard mm. which some people never achieve or get to but um i suppose making property more accessible in a space where people feel as though it might not be for them is is such an important thing to be able to bring the information and the resources to them to say look you have an opportunity here to have the roof over your head that you've always dreamt of yeah. um and i suppose that's part of the the reason that you guys do what you do is just to connect the person to the property mm. And, you know, it's, it's an unfortunate thing where people think that property ownership is only for the rich. It's only for the 1%. It really isn't. Everybody that's in the ecosystem, whether it's developers that are building properties or estate agents that are selling it, are needing to cater for every person, whether it's your first property at 500,000 Rand or it's at the Atlantic seaboard for 30 million. That mm. is pretty much mainly only foreign buyers. But there is a home for everybody. It might not be in the Atlantic seaboard. I certainly can't afford to live there. <laughs> but there are You there. too? <laughs> But there are many, many areas in all of our provinces where people can buy property and start that journey around buying and selling and just progressing throughout their lives. Um, Carl, I, I want to ask you a little bit about semigration. Mm. So we've seen now, you know, COVID came around, people got to work from home and you got to sort of determine where, you know, the spaces you would occupy would be. Some people move from inland to sort of coastal areas because they had finally now the freedom to do so. Mm. Have you seen a lot of that now on the portal with people sort of exploring options outside of the uh, metropolitan areas and sort of branching out and going, you know what, maybe I can live in Kuruman. Mm. I can do my job perfectly from there because right. I have Wi-Fi mm. and Kuruman is fun. Yeah. You know, I think one of the first things we need to understand is this whole hybrid way of work or this digital way of working where we don't go into offices. That's not going away. COVID may have left, restrictions may have gone. But that way of work isn't going away. Obviously, not every sector is, is able to work mm. remotely. Like so, nurses and yeah, doctors. And, and absolutely. But <laughs> a, vast, a, a vast chunk of our economy is becoming complete migrant work. Well, not migrant work, apologies. Complete um, uh, remote working. Yeah. So we've seen a massive growth. So we talk about the big places like Cape Town and the rest of those things. But what we have seen specifically is in the Eastern Cape. They have been incredibly dominant, even now with a slight downturn of people wanting to live in the Eastern Cape, whether it's PE or George or whatever it might be. So huge amounts of, of activity happening in the Eastern Cape. And it's like that everywhere. I, I was in Clarence a year or so ago and mm. chatted to estate agents there. And that Clarence is in the Free State. They can't find a property to sell because all of a sudden, all the Joe Burgers and everybody has gone into, into, descending a, into, Clarence. into a small little dorp mm. like Clarence. And that's become their homes. We've also seen quite a lot of activity around sort of medium term letting. So instead of going, you know, I'm going to take a, um, a, a rental for 12 months or 24 mm. months, it's three months. 
So let me go and work in Kuruman for three months. Let I'll do a 90 next, days. Yes. And then go back home and go, well, where else am I going to go in this beautiful country of ours? So we've seen a lot of that activity. So immigration is not going to go away. Remote working is not going to go away. And the property market will, will move with these dynamics of people. I want to ask you, um, <laughs> there's been this ongoing debate online about, you know, whether Airbnb has really disrupted the property market or like made it difficult for hotels to, you know, function as they used mm. to. And I'm curious as to, it was a big thing. There was a big boom in sort of people wanting to buy property for these short term rentals and not necessarily for the long run to have tenants in mm. there for three, four, five, ten years mm. at a time and sort of going, okay, we're going to make a nice kitchen with like marble. Um, what is this thing called? Countertops, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and, and that sort of thing so that we can Airbnb and be the place. Is, is that still a thing? Is it, is it happening? Yeah, I think, let me just go, because I always get worried when people talk about technology as a disruptor. Yeah. Right? So everyone goes disruptor as a negative thing, like, oh, I'm going to be disintermediated or somebody's going to be cut out of a transaction. Digital disruption is really around efficiencies, creating uh, environments where other industries can grow and, and the rest of that. So we, we did see a, a bit of disruption when Airbnb came in, and it's still very much prominent. But that's more for your investor buyer. Mm. And they've now got the ability through digital technology to go, well, if I buy that place and I put it onto Airbnb, is it going to, uh, from a monetary sense, yeah. give me more money than putting a tenant in for a long And term? I suppose that's actually what I'm asking you. That's exactly it. So technology is allowing that. And you'll see it in certain areas. Absolutely. It's way better to have somebody uh, Airbnb in your property for a week as opposed to having a, a landlord. In. But it, I think ultimately it comes down to personal preference and age, right? So without giving my age away, Airbnb <laughs> is cool. I'll use it. Yeah. If you're a 22-year-old, 23-year-old, you're going, why buy? I'll just Airbnb the same as uber right yeah. i have a property when i was 18 many years ago what did i want to do i wanted to have a car i wanted to have that independence an 18 year old now goes why i've got Airbnb, I've, I've got uber yeah so it is also generational it's very segmented but it is a disruptor but it's a, allowed investors to make proper decisions is it going to be airbnb or is it going to be a long-term rental and both have their pitfalls okay so i shouldn't buy a house <laughs> to make it an airbnb <laughs> <laughs> Do your research on privateproperty.co.za okay. and you'll then be able to get that understanding. Love this for us. Um, before I let you go, I just want to go back to the plight of the first-time home buyer. Mm. Um, going into next year, obviously, we've seen the repo rates go up by, what, 75 basis points mm. just recently. We had the midterm budget speech happening um, a few days ago. Um, where initially you would have thought, okay, I've put away the money. I've uh, maybe I've got a bit of a deposit. I'm going to get this inspector to come do this. And I'm going to, and, and now there's a sort of hesitancy about mm -hmm. affordability given what's happening with the economy. Um, what would you say to a first time home buyer? So we actually, we had Darby Roots, an economist from the efficiency group uh, on our, our platform earlier on, and he was speaking around, you know, what is, what is this interest rate? parking cycle going to look like so he was very much a, a, around there is going to be some short-term pain we're fully expecting another 75 basis point increase in november we're expecting maybe one or two more into next year but then it, you know if, if inflation starts slowing down mm. we'll hit that top cycle and then you could possibly sort of into 2024 see it going down what i do know by speaking to our banking partners is the activity of first-time home buyers has slowed down but very small Okay. A very, very. There's still huge amounts of activity, and most importantly for our economy, banks are still lending. Mm. In 2008 financial crisis, they stopped lending, and that hurts the economy. So for a first time home buyer, it is going to be a little bit more expensive. It's still cheaper now at, in terms of interest rates, only yeah. but just than we were pre-COVID. So there is still uh, uh, the ability to lend from banks or the ability to lend to people. It is going to be more expensive know the the costs around property ownership there are sort of hidden costs around transfer duties and the rest of those things understand that prepare yourself for it tighten your belt a little bit mm. but buy your first time if that's what you wanted to do listen before i let you go carl tell me about um some of the resources on the privateproperty.co.za portal that people can use to enable them to make these very well informed decisions yeah, so you've, you've got the obviously the, the standard thing around being able to look into suburbs and go, well, I'm wanting to filter, I'm wanting to buy a two bedroom, one bathroom place. 
and I'm wanting to buy it in Sandu. So you can obviously filter those, which is really around the consumer journey. We don't want you clicking multiple times and you know stumbling to find the properties of yeah. your dream. So you've got the standard filtering and the rest of those things, but really, really importantly is the things like our advice centers and the rest of those, where we can just share some of that information with you around home ownership. So you've got all of that, and then your standard, your calculators, you can do pre-approvals and get an understanding. You know, we've always got sort of champagne dreams with beer budgets. <laughs> Understand how much you yeah. can qualify for and you can do that on private property and then really just simplify your journey around finding your property. Carl, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, sir. It's always such a pleasure talking to you and I gained so much insight. Listen, what's your favorite thing about the Private Property pod Podcast? You. Yay! <laughs> I did not pay him to say that because I can't afford to. Um, thank you. We will see you soon. Good luck for the rest of 2022. And I can't wait to see what 2023 brings. It's going to be a great year for all of us. Thank I believe you. so as well. Listen, I'm Sibs Matiela. This has been the Private Property Podcast. And that's all I have for you right now. I'll see you again soon.